talking with John Walker. He's Business Development Manager for Automotive Industrial for EOS North America. Uh, John, metal additive manufacturing. We're seeing some advanced part making applications, but tooling, let's face it, tooling is the heart of mass production. What about metal additive manufacturing for tooling? Bright future? Oh, absolutely. The biggest opportunity within tooling is the use of conformal cooling. And at the current state with the size of today's equipment, you would actually traditionally produce most of your tool and then additively print a 3D printed insert with conformal cooling that would then be inserted into a larger tool or die. And this will be at the heart of a lot of automotive applications moving forward. Sure, and of course you're talking about injection molding. And for those of us who are like older industry veterans in injection molding, we remember that you may have mold inserts, but the mold base itself was cross drilled typically, and then the water lines were manifolded. Source of leaks, tremendous difficulties in doing that. But conformal cooling gives you another advantage, doesn't it? Can you tell me about why conformal cooling versus just cross drilled? Sure, so conformal cooling lets us run the water lines near net shape to the part and the actual surface for the molding or the die casting component, and that allows us to better control the temperature during the molding process, and you can actually do both heating or cooling depending on the application. So the general benefits in your parts are reduced cycle time, so time per shot goes down, mm -hmm. and as well because the temperature on the tool surface during the molding process is more uniform, you're gonna get better plastic qualities as well in your finished end use part. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, historically, of course, the cooling strategy often constrained you in terms of the part design. You could make a part so exotic, there's no way to actually cut a mold and, and effectively cool it. So is this gonna liberate, do you think, design engineers to, to design parts that maybe you couldn't do in the past? Yeah, there's actually a couple of really exciting exciting parts that unfortunately due to NDAs we can't talk about, but there's some new designs uh, potentially in cars you might drive and you may look at certain components if you know what you're looking at and kind of wonder how exactly did they mold that. Odds are they took advantage of conformal cooling which allowed them to make different shapes or smaller ribs that wouldn't be possible without that uh, finite temperature control near the molding surface. And what kind of cycle time advantages do you anticipate by going to the conformal cooling strategy? Is there a hard and fast rule about how much you can win? Uh, I mean, like anything, it's very, I guess, almost irresponsible to sit here and say, hey, you're going to get a 50% cycle time reduction. But as a general rule of thumb, I mean, I think 20%, 10% just shooting from the cuff is probably a relatively safe number to think about. Now, uh, the, the example that, uh, that you've showed us in the performance, that's a relatively small tool. How big do you think that we're going to get with additively manufactured tooling? So the largest machine that we currently produce is about 400 millimeters. So that, and you can build full field on that machine. So a 400 millimeter square insert would be the largest um, part that we could produce on EOS. There's some challenges right now um, as the industry is evolving, and those challenges pertain around heating and cooling. Uh, the bigger the parts get and the wider the field that we're trying to cover, as one area of your parts already been cooled because the laser finished fusing the powder together and then it's over on the far end of your workpiece working, one part of your part's going to be hot while the other's cold and that could lead to some twisting, warping, or some concerns with the metallurgy. Versus when it's more compact, we get much more uniform heating and um, cool down of the part, which is going to give us better part qualities. And then a lot of customers hear this and say, well, why don't you add more lasers and make these mega sure. machines? They see things like our M300 with four lasers on it. Mm -hmm. The more lasers that go inside the system, the more complicated things get with things like gas flow management, which is one of the key topics in additive manufacturing to ensure that you have good repeatable processes that can run in like a lights out environment. How about materials? Of course, tooling materials, I come from a world where it was, um, you know, P2 molds to P20 mold steels, uh, O1, A2, you know, oil hardening, air hardening steels. Are we still going to think that way in terms of additive tooling materials? So in the future, that might be possible, and that's just strictly from customer demand. Um, a lot of mold makers, and no offense to any of them, but they are very kind of craftsmen, and they're very stubborn, and they've done things a yeah. long way for a long they time. They want their P20. They want their P20, they yeah. want their H13. Yeah. Um, but the reality is, is Meraging Steel is the best material for uh, molding applications, die casting applications, and that's what virtually all of our customers are using. Uh, companies like Audi, companies like Exco, um, that's the, what they're using in their process. And generally speaking, if you just compare data sheets to data sheets, MS1 3D printed is going to give you better part properties than P20 or then H13. So other than an unfamiliarity or learning a new material, there's not much of an argument against working with Meraging Steel. Uh, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, do you think this will be the dominant technology for making tooling? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the biggest things for us is that the automotive industry is extremely active right now. And as machines come online, like the M404, which has four lasers, the M300-4, which have four lasers, a lot of the auto companies, and we introduce automation into our machine like we have on the M300, a lot of the automotive companies are going to start to look at that machine, understanding that now that we have automation, 
we have multiple lasers, we might be at a point where we can talk about direct printing some parts and doing mass production at automotive. Today, we're not gonna do high run 4 million parts, but as we start to look at some of the more niche vehicles, specialty edition vehicles, we can really start to think about if this makes sense. And once that becomes more online, I believe that the automotive industry in general, because most parts are made via tooling application, they're gonna see their customers looking at 3D printing and try to understand where they can fit it in their operations, and hopefully conformal cooling will continue to take off after that. Metal additive manufacturing predicted to become the dominant tooling technology, according to John Walker of EOS North America.